Brethren, I greet all of you in the name of Jesus. Bona sifiwe. Praise God. Amen. Praise God. Bona sifiwe. Yes, I'm excited this morning. My name is Simon. And by the grace of God, I'm born again. I'm very much excited to be in this particular place. And for the grace of God that has been so sufficient to enable me to come up to this particular time. And I want to take this particular opportunity to appreciate our Archdeacon and the entire clergy because of uh, finding it fit that I may stand in this congregation and share the word of God. Today, as you are very much aware, we are celebrating men. I don't want to say father, because I know to be a father, you start by being a man. So it's a man first, and then a father. And then when you talk about father, we are talking about the male parent, yes, but there is also the other element of nurturing, and that is the father, the doing part of it. And I think that is what we are more celebrating at this particular time. We are not only looking at that particular man who is being referred to as a father by maybe a son or a daughter, but we are looking at a man generally because they have taken up a role. They have been fathers, whether they have daughters or son or not. And for a father to be it takes a woman so that the woman becomes a mother and the man becomes the father. Sometimes it might be very difficult for you to be referred to as a father when there is no woman. So a woman has been there. And for that case, that is why we see the father celebrating this particular day. I want to go direct to the theme of the day what you are talking about, and that is divine positioning. Divine positioning, getting it from the word position. Now, allow me to confess one thing before I continue, because the way I see it today, by the time we, uh, we are through with this uh, particular service, there are positions that are going to change, and there are people that are going to take position. Buona sifiwe. And the positions that we are going to take, they must be divine. Because there are positions that we must have taken that are not divine. This morning, I came to tell you that positions will change. If they were not divine, they must become divine. And if there were positions that were not taken, we have to agree that there is nothing that we might achieve before we take the position. I want to appreciate God. For the, little, uh, for the few days that have been in this particular church, I've seen the music ministry taking a great position in this sanctuary. Clap for yourselves. <laughs> Today, the choir has ministered to me in a very special way, and I know I'm not alone. The praise team has done the same. I'll tell you that in this altar of St. Matthew's, uh, as he came, there is a great position when it comes to the music ministry. And if you are not aware, please be aware of that. And if it has never been, to, been said by another person, now know that there is an altar of music ministry in this particular altar that God is taking even to more greater heights. Bonus, if you will. And when we are given something, we get proud of it and we protect it. It is our position. We must stand strong and be willing to protect the position. So I want you to ask your neighbor, what position have you taken? Because like I started by saying, there are positions that we are going to change. There are positions that we have not taken, but this morning we are going to take them. And sometimes we have been wondering what is happening in our lives. I came to tell you that maybe that what you are going through, that where the confusion is, is because you've not yet identified your position. I came to tell you that 
It is time we identify our position in the house of God. It's about time we identify our position in our families. It's about time we identify the position where we come from. Because it is the position that, going is, uh, that God is going to use to take us to another level. When I was thinking about this position, something came to my mind. When we are looking at the teams, many a times their leader will tell them, now it is time to take position. And if when you come to the military officers, when they want to strategize and they want to lay an attack, there will come a commander and there will come a time that they would be required to take a position. That is telling us that we might not succeed until we take the position. And we might be knowing that we need to take the position, but the big question might be, what position am I supposed to take? Because sometimes we have taken the position that were not meant to be ours, and we failed. Because the position that we took were meant for other people. I, told, I came to tell you this morning that the position that we are going to take, it must be connected with God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. The word of God that was preached to us from the book of Mark chapter 10, verse 46 to 52, I don't want to repeat because it was read in, uh, to us in a very eloquent manner. And the story is talking about Jesus Christ, when he was going to, uh, to, to, uh, to Jericho, and when he was passing by, there was a blind man by the name Bartimaeus. And I want to tell you that Jesus was on his way, and actually, he was on his way. He wouldn't have stopped, but he had to, because there was a person who had knew his possession very well. And because he had taken his possession, there is no way Jesus would have passed by. Because he found a person that had already known that there was a position that he was supposed to take. I came to tell you that for Jesus to be revealed in our lives, we are not just going to stay like that. There is a lot of blindness that is happening in our lives. It is about time we take the position and we say that we will no longer stay blind because Jesus is passing by. And this blind man, the Bible says that when he heard that Jesus was passing by, he started shouting, son of David, have mercy on me. And that tells me that before he even started shouting, it is very clear that he must have been aware that there was such a man by the name Jesus, born as if he were. And he had clearly heard what this man Jesus had done to other people. And when he had done all this, something had come to him and he had told himself that what he is doing to others, it is my time that he do it to me, born as if he were. Because he knew his position very well, that he had to connect it with the man Jesus Christ, born as if he were. And that is why he had the people passing by. And it was a great multitude. And he told himself that it is my time. What I have been hearing that this man Jesus is doing, it is my time that I get the blessing with me. That he had been blind. We are not told whether he was blind since birth or whether he had got the condition in his adulthood or as he was maturing. That one we are not told. But the thing is, this man at that particular time could not see. The man could not see. But even when he could not see, he had heard. Because his ear, ears were open. He had had an encounter with Jesus Christ before. It might not have been physical, but he was aware of the man who was passing by. In this particular time, we must take the position. We must say that we will no longer hear again. It's about time now we get up and receive the blessing that comes with the man, Jesus Christ. We say that, yes, he's proceeding, but we must acquire that my blessing. 
Our lives have been blinded by a lot of things. Probably you're looking at your life like this. And you know the blindness. I want you to imagine the life of a blindness. A blind spends their life in a world of darkness. Because they are not able to see. But this man was able to move from the world of darkness. And he was able to move to the world of life. Because he had an encounter with Jesus Christ. And the reason why he had an encounter with Jesus Christ is because he knew very well that I have to stand my ground. I must take my position. Take your position as a Christian. Take your position as a woman of God. Take your position as a man of God. We came to give you the information that if you, whatever thing that you are, it is about time you take your position. And you declare that the other people have taken their position. But my position, I'm going to define it. It is not just going to be a mere position. It is going to be a divine position. And when you have a divine position, you know who is leading you. And you cannot look back. You know you have been blind. But it's about time you get the light. You declare that you can no longer continue with a life of darkness. Because the man Jesus Christ has come, it's about time, it's not no longer to listen to what they are saying, but see Jesus physically. And as the story continues, there were those people that told him, keep quiet. They looked at the man and these people, maybe they knew the man very well. They knew he had been blind. And I don't, I don't think he was being told to keep quiet. Because, because he was a very important person according to them. The reason why they told him to keep quiet is because they looked at him and they saw a person who was disturbing the master. And sometimes that is how we are regarded. When we want to take our position, I'll tell you that it is not easy. When you want to take up your position, it's not easy. Because there are things that you are going to leave behind. It's not going to be easy. There are those that will come and they want to shut you up. There are those that will come and they want to discourage you. Even whatever you are doing, whatever you do, wherever you are, wherever you work, whoever you stay with, whoever are your friends, whoever are your families, they have looked at you and they have seen that this is just a blind person. This person will just stand up and disturb the master. They want to give the words of discouragement. The situation, it might not be a human being, but you might just look at the situation the way it is. And all you can read, it is just the discouragement. You look at the economic times, and you are there in your business, and all you see it is the darkness, or you see it's a discouragement story. The people that were supposed to take you and lift you and show you the position that you are supposed to be in, they just bring just the discouragement. But I want to tell you, just stand like the blind Bartimaeus. He knew very well that his position would not be taken by another person because he knew what he had in his heart. The person who would come and interpret it it was only Jesus Christ. Well, sometimes we wait for human beings to come and interpret, thinking that they are going to understand the situation that we are in, and they are going to help us. But sometimes we have got the discouragement. We have got the disappointment. And we have felt that we no longer need to move ahead. We just, we just feel we are discouraged. And like we no longer have the power to proceed. Like the blind Bartimaeus, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. The man, the more he was being discouraged, 
the more he shouted. Even the situations that we are in, the more you find the situations being discouraging, I came to tell you that the stronger your, witness, uh, your, your testimony is going to be. However difficult the situation is going to be, the situation is not there to discourage you. The situation is there to make your testimony even greater. All that you need to do is just to stand and call upon the name of Jesus. Do not let Jesus pass by. He's here, but he's telling us, stand, take up your position in a way that Jesus can recognize you. Bona sifiwe. Point number one that Batmaya had, uh, had realized is that he was able to remain focused. No matter the situation, no matter the discouragement that were coming along, the man, Blyde Batmaya, was able to remain focused. We are given stories about the animals when they are hunting. When it's a play, uh, pride of lion, and when they come across a herd of gazelles or other preys, one thing that assists them to achieve their target is to remain focused. Once we remain focused in Jesus Christ, all the other voices of discouragement they will just be but mere noise. Because we know whom we are looking at. He's able to do everything that we ask. And even more than we can even think. I came to encourage you, brethren, this morning. Be determined to remain focused. Stand in your position and be identified with the one who called you. The one who saved your life. The one who gave you the light to become a Christian. The one whom you believe. There is no given time that he was not able to do that what you are praying for. No matter how darkness is, even if it has been there for the entire of your life, once he come, the darkness will have to change to the light. The other thing, point number two. The man was able to remain steadfast and immovable in his life. The problem we have as a Christian nowadays is that we wait upon the Lord. But the moment when we are about to receive that what God has kept for us, we lose hope. We lose hope. I came to tell you this morning that it is very, very important to remain steadfast and immovable. You say that you are not going to listen to the voices of the naysayers. You are not going to listen to the voices of the people that are about to take you from your focus. You are not going to move from the right way of Jesus Christ. Because sometimes we have got to a place and we have looked at what we were, we were praying for. We've prayed, yes. But at the time that we've taken so much time, we've gone to other gods. We've thought in our minds that there are other things that can help us apart from our Lord Jesus Christ. I came to tell you, to encourage you that if you are trusting in God, hold on. Do not be movable. Remain steadfast. Hold on to there. Your time is coming. Even if it has taken all the time, even if it is the situation that has been there since you are born, even if it is a situation that has been, been there, very difficult in your family, very difficult in your home, very difficult in your children, 
Very difficult are the places where you get your daily bread. Remain steadfast. Do not be immovable. Jesus Christ is getting you a new testimony. The other thing that happened to the man but Myers, eventually he was able to acquire the glory. I'm telling you that the moment we stand our position, the moment we take our position and we define it, we call it divine position. What is awaiting us is a glory. One of the most difficult stories that has ever been given in the scriptures is the story of man by the name Job. And you know that the man lost everything that he had. The man was attacked by the disease and all he had was lost. But the Bible tells us that when a time came when he was given everything he lost twice. It's just a matter of remaining steadfast in the word of God. I'm telling you, it's just a matter of remaining focused in the word of God. It's a matter of just taking your divine position in your Christian life. You'd stand upright and declare that whatever come me, I am still holding on to the promises of our Lord Jesus Christ. And eventually, glory and a new testimony is waiting upon you. May God help us to remain focused. May God help us to remain immovable. May God shower us with his own glory. In the name of God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. I'm gonna hold. I'm gonna hold on.